My name is Brad Napier. I'm an otolaryngologist practicing in Honolulu, Hawaii. I've practiced here for the past 28 years. During this time, I've had the opportunity to perform direct fiber optic laryngoscopy on approximately 30,000 people. This has given me a good sense and a good feel for how to use a flexible laryngoscope. The same skill can be applied to the bronchoscope. And if there is one instrument that is underappreciated and utilized in airway management today, it's the flexible bronchoscope. I believe this is because many anesthesiologists and many emergency room doctors are afraid to place the scope into the nose to gain access to the larynx. Most of these physicians are concerned about creating epistaxis and complicating a difficult situation. It's for this reason that I have invented a new oral device that facilitates transoral bronchoscopic intubation. This device is called ROTIGS. ROTIGS stands for Rapid Oral Tracheal Intubation Guidance System. It is comprised of three elements, a flexible mouthpiece that is horizontally flexible and malleable. It's also comprised of two bite blocks. These bite blocks are rigid in the vertical plane. And finally, a guidance tube. The concept is that we can use relative bimaxillary fixation to hold this device in the middle of your mouth. And by using the guidance pathway, we can direct a route from the incisors to the uvula without touching the tongue. The bronchoscope, as it proceeds from the incisors to the uh, region of the uvula, then continues along the posterior pharyngeal wall, hypopharyngeal wall, use the base of tongue, epiglottis, and finally the vocal cords. This pathway is minimally invasive because there is no stimulation of the tonsillar region or of the tongue. Because of this, a lesser degree of topicalization can be performed and gain adequate anesthesia. As I mentioned previously, this device was invented for anesthesiologists so that they can perform awake, minimally invasive, transoral bronchoscopic intubation. In many instances, an anesthesiologist would like to put a patient to sleep and intubate them while they're awake. This can e easily be performed and easily accomplished by the following method. First thing you do is spray the patient's nose with xylocaine, spray their oral pharynx with xylocaine, form a brief 4% xylocaine gargle, and finally 4 cc's of 4% xylocaine via nebulization. At this point, the patient has received adequate topical anesthesia. The next step is to hand the device to the patient. The patient will put the device in their mouth. It will be self-centering. Next, the bronchoscope is passed from the incisors to the back of the guidance tube. The first landmark is the back of the guidance tube. When you see the back of the guidance tube, you will also see the uvula. Guide the tip of the bronchoscope in an inferior direction and advance the bronchoscope. Continue along the posterior pharyngeal wall to the vocal cords, past the vocal cords, and into the trachea. Your assistant will advance the endotracheal tube over the bronchoscope and into the uh, guidance tube and finally into the trachea. You remove the bronchoscope and you have an airway. The endotracheal tube is then disengaged from the guidance tube with your finger. The Rotex device is then removed and finally the endotracheal tube is taped to the patient's face. 